Welcome to Blending with Henry, the number one channel on YouTube for blender reviews and delicious blender recipes. Hey you guys, how you doing? My name is Henry. I took a little time off so I could recharge, but I'm back to show you guys a brand new product. So today I'm going to be showing you a brand new Vitamix. Now this new machine has something old, something new, something borrowed, but something copper? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and this one's called the Vitamix Professional Series 750 Heritage Collection. Now the Heritage Collection has an all new metal design, rugged, it's very resistant to scratches, and it'll add a touch of elegance to your kitchen. So to celebrate the Heritage Collection, I have a couple of great recipes I want to share with you guys today. So today we're going to be making butternut squash soup with lentils and sauteed apples. Mmm! And to wash it down, a cucumber melon mojito, virgin. Ah, <laughs> so if you guys are ready to take a look at this machine, come on with me and let's get started. The all new Vitamix Professional Series 750 Heritage Collection. Now unapologetically, this is the top of the line Vitamix. From its all metal design motor base to its elegant copper finish that is polished with a clear coat to resist the wear and tear of life in the kitchen. It is a beauty to behold and will undoubtedly turn heads at first glance. Am I seeing double? Okay. <laughs> well, I don't know because this is the Vitamix Professional Series 750 and this is the Vitamix Professional Series 750. So what's the difference? Now they both look the same on the outside. Now this is the original Vitamix Professional Series 750 and this is the new Heritage Collection. So on the front, the control panel differences will be the first thing you'll probably notice. Now I'm going to show you. So I'm going to turn them both on. Now at first glance, you're going to notice that the program selection and the variable speed control light up on the original Pro 750, plus the start and stop and the pulse switches. Now on the new Heritage Collection, the start and stop and the pulse light up, but the variable speed control and the program selection do not light up. Now I want you to be prepared for that. Now if you're coming from the original Pro 750 and you're buying the new Heritage Collection, I want you to be in the know. This is the way this model is designed. So I'm going to go ahead and lower the lights so you can get a better look at the control panel backlights. So what is the main difference between the original Pro 750 and the new Heritage Collection? Well, functionally they are the same, but the motor base housing is where they separate. Now this is the original Pro 750 and the brushed stainless finish. It's a beautiful design, but it's not exactly what it looks like. So let me show you guys. So I'm going to turn it to its side over here. Now, the top cabinet here and the bottom half are actually plastic. In fact, the entire housing is made of plastic. But that's not a bad thing, okay? <laughs> now, the brushed stainless top half is actually plastic dipped in liquid nickel, then brushed. Now, both the bottom half and the top half are built with high quality plastics. They'll last for many years, so you have nothing to worry about. This is one of the two versions that are available in the Heritage Collection. Now, this is the copper metal finish. Now I'm going to turn this around as well so you can view the body design. Now the top half here and the bottom half are an all metal build and are very rugged. Now even though both parts of the housing resemble the original 750's housing, this machine feels built like a tank you guys. Now the copper finish is polished with a clear coat for a smooth feel with a resistance to scratches and like I mentioned, it's built like a tank. <laughs> now you guys, this new design has a better sound dampening for even quieter blending. I absolutely love this machine. It definitely commands attention. Like the previous Pro 750, the new Heritage Collection comes with a 64 ounce low profile container that fits underneath most cabinets. And it also comes with the Tamper, which is the most understated, underrated, underappreciated, misunderstood, and most helpful tool that will come with your Vitamix. And I assure you guys, any blender could certainly use one. 
The Professional Series 750 Heritage Collection is also compatible with the 32 ounce wet container. Now the 32 ounce wet container is the perfect companion to the included 64 ounce wet container. It's smaller in design you guys and it's perfect for making those recipes for one or two people. Now I actually love this container, I use it every day. I'm going to be using it later in the video. Vitamix has a new redesigned recipe book called Introduction to High Performance Blending. And honestly, you guys, it's becoming rare to find a great quality recipe book included with today's high performance blenders. Vitamix continues to care about their customers. So I'm going to go ahead and open the book here and give you guys a sneak peek. Now, one of the first recipes in the book are for making green smoothies. Of course, it's the most popular drink to make. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the page here. Let's see. Ah, the instruction booklet is everybody's favorite book to read. <laughs> now, I always recommend to check this out even before turning on your machine. But if you don't want to read the instruction booklet, there's a getting started guide right in the recipe book. It will show you how to correctly load the container for efficient blending. It will also show you about cleaning and how to start up your Vitamix and the tamper and even the switches on the control panel. Vitamix also includes a helpful getting started DVD, you guys, with a professional chef making recipes in the 750. Now, on to the recipes. Now, this looks pretty good. Okay. <laughs> baby food. My close friends are having a baby soon, and they have a Vitamix. They will love making fresh and healthy baby food. Now, here's a frozen dessert section, and what's nice is that they actually show the full color picture along with the recipe ingredients. Okay, so I'm going to thumb through a little bit here. And looking onto this page, now this is soy milk. Now again, with the picture of it and the instructions on how to do it. And I'm going to show you one more. Let me thumb through here. And here we go. Here's a blackberry pear smoothie. I already tried this. This is great. It looks amazing. Now, as I mentioned to you guys, this is a great book. And I am glad Vitamix still continues to include it. There's never a bad time for this. Butternut squash soup with lentils and sautéed apples. So let's take a look at the recipe. One whole butternut squash, two and a half cups of vegetable broth, one half cup of cooked red lentils, one fourth cup of sautéed yellow onions, one cup of sautéed apples, four to five roasted garlic cloves, two tablespoons of olive oil, one eighth of a teaspoon of ground black pepper, one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt, one teaspoon of maple syrup, a dash of cinnamon, and a dash of red pepper flakes. And let's get started. Obviously, the main attraction is the butternut squash. Now, it's naturally sweet with a nutty flavor, similar to a pumpkin. And it looks a little obnoxious, you guys. I am not commenting on that, okay? <laughs> to prepare our butternut squash for baking, we're going to lay out a sheet of aluminum foil. Then you may actually notice that the top of it is not getting covered. So you want to go ahead and put another sheet of aluminum foil on top. It's important that it's fully covered. Preheat your oven at 350 degrees and bake the butternut squash for 90 minutes. After the butternut squash is cooled, then you want to go ahead and peel off the skin, cut it in half, and remove all the seeds and flesh on the inside. Then begin to start cutting it up in chunks as you see me doing right here. The flesh should be fork tender. And this is what your fully cooked squash should look like cut up in chunks. To prepare the red lentils, you want to first rinse them and then drain them and then pour them into boiling water and cook them for about 10 to 15 minutes. Now I'm going to pour some olive oil into a heated skillet so I can saute the apples. And it's very important that you use medium heat. I'm 
I'm not adding any extra seasoning or flavorings because all that will be put into the soup when we start the blend. Once the apples become brown and fork tender, they're done. In the same skillet, I'm going to pour in some more olive oil so I can saute the onions. Mmm, it's always nice to have those bits left over from the apples as more flavor. I'm also going to drop in some rosemary. It'll flavor the onions as well as add a nice aroma to the butternut squash soup. Before we get started with the soup, you guys, I'm going to make a quick cashew cream for the soup. So I'm pouring in one cup of raw soaked cashews. Cold filtered water right to the top of the cashews. I blend on high for about a minute. And pour it into a container. It comes out nice and smooth. It's just cashews and water, you guys. Now, I'm not going to add any flavorings because I'm going to be using this as a garnish for the soup. Okay, you guys, so I'm going to go ahead and add the ingredients to the vitamins to make our soup. So I'm putting in the one whole butternut squash that I bake and I cut up in chunks. Two and one half cups of vegetable broth. Now this is boiling broth right off the stove. Now the Vitamix is very much capable of making its own hot soup in about six minutes. But to cut the time in half, I'm using boiling broth. One half cup of the cooked red lentils that we made earlier on the stove. One fourth of a cup of the sauteed onions. Now we made more than that earlier, so we're going to use the rest of it later on to make the soup chunky. One cup of the sauteed apples. And we're going to use the rest of the apples later on to give the soup texture. Four to five roasted garlic cloves. Two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Now it adds richness to the soup as well as reduce any foam. One eighth of a teaspoon of fresh ground black pepper. One and a half teaspoons of kosher salt. One teaspoon of pure maple syrup. No pancake syrup, you guys. <laughs> A dash of cinnamon and a dash of red pepper flakes. Okay, I'm going to attach my lid cover. Now, normally, you guys, I'd be using one of the presets, such as the hot soup setting right over here. There we go. But since I use hot boiling broth, I can do all this in half the time. So I'm going to use the variable speed control, which is down here. And I'm going to start off from variable speed one. I'm going to gradually increase to the highest speed. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and remove the lid so I can go ahead and add the rest of our ingredients so I can make a chunky soup. Okay, so I'm going to put in what's left of our sautéed apples and onions. And yes, I could have put it right through the lid plug opening, but okay, I forgot. All right, so sue me. Okay. <laughs> all right, and now I'm going to add in the rest of our cooked lentils. Oh, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and secure my lid back in place. And now, you guys, I want to go ahead and pulse the ingredients. So I'm going to move the variable speed control to speed 4 right over here. 
So I'm going to go ahead and pulse it a few times to texturize the soup from the extra added ingredients. You can actually see all the ingredients chopped up, so now the soup is nice and chunky. Now I'm going to move the Vitamix back a bit, you guys, so I can set up the counter so I can pour up our soup. I'll be right back. So I've got this nice soup bowl and some crunchy sourdough bread. I'm going to pour up this delicious butternut squash soup with lentils and sautéed apples. Oh, I wish you guys could taste this right now. It's so, so good. And the flavor packs a punch. It could become your favorite comfort food. <laughs> and remember, you guys, there's no dairy in the ingredients, so just enjoy. It's so creamy that it looks like we used milk, but we didn't. And now I'm going to crack some fresh ground black pepper on top of the soup. Remember that cashew cream we made earlier? Check this out. It makes a perfect garnish and no amount of skills. Trust. And now I'm going to cut up some chives for the garnish. Now you guys, if you have a guest coming over and you want to impress them, these are very simple ways to dress up your soup. They'll think you worked on it all day, but you know the secret. <laughs> and there you go. So what do you do with all the leftover soup? Well, of course, instead of throwing it out, you're going to put it into a lunch container like you see me doing here, right? And you're going to end up putting it into the refrigerator. And in the refrigerator or the freezer, it doesn't last very long, or it might get freezer burned. Let me show you a way to store this for long term while maintaining its freshness and its flavor. Set it in the freezer until it's completely frozen. So this is our butternut squash soup that I put in the freezer just long enough to get it frozen. And this is a vacuum sealer. Now this is the secret weapon that's going to aid in keeping our soup fresh for long term. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the lid. And this is a vacuum sealer bag right over here. This is what we're going to be putting the soup in. So first I'm going to go ahead and remove the soup. It should slide right out from the container. Then I'm going to go ahead and put the soup right inside this bag. And just go ahead and push it into the slot of the vacuum sealer, depending on what vacuum sealer you have. So what it does is it sucks all the air out the bag and creates this nice seal at the top so no air can get back in the bag. Air kills our food, you guys. Now this will keep in the freezer up to two years while maintaining the freshness and the flavor. I tell you guys, a vacuum sealer and your Vitamix were made for each other. This is a mash that was meant to be. The Cucumber Melon Mojito is fresh, and it's the perfect drink to get a jump start to the springtime. So here's the recipe. 3 fourths cup of almond milk, 1 cup of green grapes, 1 half cups of frozen cantaloupe chunks, 1 cup of frozen honeydew melon chunks, 1 half cup of cucumber chunks, 1 whole lime peeled, 2 heaping tablespoons of honey, and 1 sprig of fresh mint. And let's get started. To make the cucumber melon mojito, I'm going to be adding 3 fourths cup of almond milk. You can add 1 half a cup as well, you guys, if you want a more frozen texture. 1 cup of green grapes. Now check this out. I also vacuum sealed the cantaloupe chunks as well as vacuum sealing the honeydew melon chunks. Now what I did was I just cut them up fresh and I put them in the vacuum sealer and threw it right in the freezer. So one and a half cups of frozen cantaloupe chunks. And one cup of frozen honeydew melon chunks. A half a cup of fresh cucumber chopped. One whole lime peeled. Two tablespoons of honey. Now we recommend you guys just use flavorless honey. No extra added flavors like orange or anything to change the taste. And then one sprig of fresh mint. This is all you're going to need, you guys, and it'll give you that nice, strong flavor. So I'm going to put my lid on, 
And I'm going to use the smoothie setting right over here. Really simple. It's going to blend for about one minute. I'm going to move the Vitamix back a bit, you guys, so I can set up our glasses to pour up our drinks. I'll be right back. I'm almost speechless, you guys. <laughs> Look how beautiful that looks. I mean, the Vitamix really blends smooth. And it really smells so, so good. That cucumber, the melon, and that fresh mint. I absolutely love this drink. I'm going to add a festive straw to match the color of the drinks, as I always like to do. And now I'm going to garnish each one of the drinks with a sprig of fresh mint. Now this is perfect if you're serving it to a guest, because that gives them an idea of what they're actually drinking, and in this case, it's a mojito. So, were you and the new Vitamix Professional Series 750 Heritage Collection made for each other? Let's take a look. I mentioned before that this machine is stunning to look at, and sometimes looks alone are reason enough for you to buy. If you already have the original Professional Series 750, there really isn't enough feature difference to justify upgrading to the new Heritage Collection. If you have a classic Vitamix model, you might enjoy some of the features such as the low profile container, all metal body, quieter blending, and elegance of design that the Heritage Collection brings. Okay, you guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Now, if you like this video, please press the like button, and please subscribe for future video updates. Now, you can purchase a Vitamix like the one you saw in the video through me, save money, and get some special perks, so please contact me for details. Now, supporting me means more future content for you guys, so I need your support. Please remember to visit me at BlendingWithHenry.com. Blending with Henry is also on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram. And I will see you all next time.